Hello everyone, I am Thibaut Vidal. I'm a professor at the informatics department of Cucurio. Today, I will be presenting to you a work about born-again tree ensembles. Born-again tree ensembles is an optimization algorithm that can transform a random forest into an equivalent decision tree that has exactly the same classification behavior. It is a very important step in the progress towards interpretable machine learning techniques. Thank you for your interest. Today I'm going to talk about Born Again Tree Ensemble in a joint work with Maximilian Schiffer and Tony Pacheco. Our concept is the following. Suppose that you receive a tree ensemble or a random forest, and you wish to transform this tree ensemble into a single decision tree called Born Again Tree, which is the smallest possible in terms of size, and which faithfully reproduces the behavior of the random forest in the entire feature space. If you do so, then you have a born again tree, which is effectively a different representation of the same classifier with the same decision function. But since it's a single tree, you obtain a classification method, which is much more interpretable and easy to understand. This is our goal. Why interpretability is so important? Well, it's because today we are using classifiers in application related to medicine, criminal justice, or credit violation, which have a major impact on human lives. Recently, there have been a number of critics related to the use of the COMPASS system in criminal justice, which is very likely to make biases and mistakes in many situations. But due to the fact that this system is a black box, there is no way to actually track the issues and understand what is going on. There is also some belief that if you want a good classification accuracy, it's necessary to have a black box, and that there is some kind of trade-off between performance and interpretability. Actually, it's not necessarily the case. Some previous studies, like uh, studies from Cynthia Houdin, has shown that simple rule-based classification algorithm can be very efficient in the criminal justice system and are fully interpretable. So the goal today is to help in the progress towards interpretable method to, to use them in those type of applications. In previous research, many studies have concentrated on the simplification on random forests. For example, by pruning some trees that are not expressive or that are redundant to simplify them. Other works have consisted in training a born again tree that would reproduce the behavior of a tree ensemble, a bit like we do except that these works usually rely on manufactured samples. That is, they create training examples based on the input classifier, and then they use these examples to train the new born-again tree, which means that they cannot guarantee uh, faithfulness uh, with the original tree ensemble on every possible input, mainly just on the, they only can guarantee for the manufactured examples. In other areas, there have been other works related to the interpretability of other classifiers. For example, neural networks. Um, in neural networks, it's common to use uh, a teaching method to train a compact student, which has the same knowledge, but a more compact structure. Finally, there has been uh, integral programming on, on dynamic programming techniques, which have been used to try to achieve what we call an optimal decision tree, that is, a small decision tree, which is as small as possible for a given accuracy level. But currently, no previous method has been able to do exactly the task that we are proposing, which is to transform a tree ensemble into its most compact representation as a single decision tree. Our methodology is fairly simple. We basically can view the input tree ensemble as a set of decision tree, which correspond to hierarchical splits in the feature space. If you collect all splits, you basically create a map of the feature space into small cells in which each cell is connected to one classification choice. The red region corresponds to a collection of cells. And actually, it can be defined as a pair of cells, the one that is on the bottom left and the one on, that is on the top right. When you want to train a born again tree, you want to train a tree which uh, faithfully reproduces the classification behavior on every possible cell in this region. There are always two main difficulties when you do that. The first thing is that the map that contains uh, these cells is huge. The example that we show 
just have two features here. But if you have 20 or 50 features, you can easily understand that the number of cells grows exponentially with the number of features. The second thing is the inherent complexity of the dynamic program. Building a born again tree that reproduces the same behavior as the region is not something simple. So formally stating our problem, uh, we are receiving a tree ensemble uh, T and we want to create a decision tree of minimal size such that the decision function is the same. We prove in the paper that this problem is NP-hard when optimizing uh, depths, number of leaves, or any objective that is a hierarchy of these two objectives. More interestingly, even verifying that uh, feasible, that solution is feasible, that is, that a born again tree is faithful to a tree ensemble, this is already an NP-complete verification problem. So even checking feasibility is the difficult problem. To solve the born again tree problem, we apply dynamic programming techniques. So our, the idea of a dynamic program for this problem is to characterize the optimal solution, that is the optimal depth of a born again tree for any possible region, uh, ZL and ZR. So ZL is the bottom left cell and ZR is the top right cell. Um, if this region is uniform, that means it has the same classification everywhere on the region, then this is a leaf, so the optimal policy the optimal solution is zero. Otherwise, you have to split, and you can split over every possible feature, that's the first mean, on every possible hyperplane that belong to one of the original trees uh, for this feature. And you obtain one plus max of the size of the left and right tree for this split. This is what this equation expresses. Uh, of course, dynamic programming consists in using memorization techniques to avoid recalculating the same result for, for the same region all over again. Uh, still, if you want to apply dynamic programming for this task, you have two main issues. The first thing is that actually testing uniformity of a region is not easy because the region contains an exponential number of cells. The second thing is that there is a large number of recursive calls, so that can be very heavy. First, to avoid the base case checking, what we do is that we actually integrate the test of the base case within the dynamic programming states. So when we receive a new region, we are going to compare the top right and the bottom left cells. If they are from different cells, clearly we need to split. Otherwise, uh, it may or it may not be uh, a cell, uh, a uniform region. To respond to this question, instead of doing some checking method, we are going to split also. But we are going to wait until the recursion unwinds in order to check whether the two leaves, the two region on the left and right where leaves, and if they had the same class, we are going to actually return zero because it's a leaf that represents the, uh, the region. So we detect the base case not when we open the recursion, but when we unwind it. And it can be represented as a small update of the equations. The other technique that we use to simplify and to speed up the algorithm is related to a property of monotonicity. Imagine you test a uh, split that is in black on this little figure, and that the left subproblem has an optimal solution with depths of two, and that the right subproblem has an optimal solution with depths of one. Well, this means you have a solution with depths of three, which is one plus the maximum. Um, testing a hyperplane on the right of this black hyperplane in that case is not useful. Why is it so? It's because if you do so, you are expanding the left region. and because of monotonicity, you know that the optimal solution for the left region, if you expand it, can only become worse. So it will be two or more. So you will not get a better solution than three overall. It's impossible. And the same argument holds when you just reverse the, the side. So if you had one on the left and two on the right, you don't need to test any other hyperplane on the left. Finally, if you had two on two, this is even better for you because you don't need to test any other hyperplane. So this limits the number of recursion that you make. And basically, you make a binary search instead of a linear search and avoid a lot of tests. The full algorithm uh, for the dynamic programming is available in the paper. You will find it. It has a number of additional tricks, efficient data structures, the use of bounds. Those are all contributions that greatly speed up the process and make it practicable up to a certain size. We tested our process of uh, born-again tree training 
on six main data sets that arise from different applications in medicine, criminal justice, and credit scoring. For example, we have the Compass data set in the same version that is being used by uh, Cynthia Houdin on, on quarters. This data set, they have up to 17,000 samples, up to 17 features. For data preparation, we use one hot encoding for categorical variables, and we use binning for continu continuous variables into 10 ordinal scales. Uh, we generated training on test samples for each data set by tenfold cross validation, which means that we have 10 training tests, training on test sets. And for each fold, we generated a random forest, which consists of 10 trees with a depth of three. That means this random forest has roughly up to 80, 80 leaves. The first experiment we do relates to the scalability of our user. We tested a uh, data set with a varying number of samples, number of features, and number of trees. And we observed that the number of samples doesn't really matter for the algorithm. Um, in contrast, the number of features is very important. When you have a large number of features, the number of states in the dynamic programming quickly grows. And in fact, we can handle data set with this optimal algorithm up to more or less 20 features. The number of trees also has an impact on computational time, but it's nowhere close to the impact of the number of features. We also evaluated the structure of the born again trees. Indeed, born again trees are very interesting because they represent the random forest. They represent the inherent complexity of these classifiers. Um, actually, the complexity of born again trees can be fairly high. It can have up to 1,000 leaves sometimes. Um, which is more than the total number of leaves of the random forest. And this is even so with the fact that this is the smallest possible born again tree that represents the random forest. It's a good question to ask why. Well, there is two reasons. The first is that the behavior of the random forest is a combination of behavior. So the decision function of the random forest quickly grow in terms of number of pieces. It actually grows in a combinatorial fashion. The second thing is relates to the fact that our born again decision tree are supposed to imitate the random forest everywhere. It should reproduce the same decision function regardless of the sample. Uh, regard yes, regardless of the of the location. But there may actually be impossible feature combinations uh, in which there is no training example in the original data set, but which are still translated in the born again decision tree. And this actually um, uh, leads to more complex decision tree, born again decision tree for no apparent uh, utility. So what we did to avoid such regions, which are basically impossible, uh, which basically correspond to impossible feature combination, but to non-uniform behavior uh, in the random forest, we just applied a very simple pruning technique in which we pass the training example uh, of the data set through the born again tree and eliminate any split which has um, no training example. And the miracle happens. Uh, we end up with born again trees which, with pruning, which are actually smaller in terms of number of uh, leaves than the original random forest, and which are much more interpretable because they represent uh, they are represented as a single tree, which is much more easy to follow from a human perspective. This uh, actually gives uh, all the, the usefulness of this procedure. Of course, when you do that pruning, you do not guarantee anymore the original premise of our work, which was that we want to reproduce the same exact uh, decision function, because you don't actually know if a region is just empty because it's impossible feature combination or if it's just because of data scarcity. So we tested uh, our born again tree plus pruning to see if there was any visible change of accuracy compared to the original classifier random forest. So we compare in this right table the accuracy of the random forest born again tree and born again tree plus pruning. The good news is that the difference of accuracy did not go beyond uh, like the third digit so the impact on classification accuracy was almost negligible, which is a good news for us. Uh, we can also verify from this result that by definition, the original born again tree without pruning has effectively the same behavior as the random forest. So to conclude, um, our algorithm based on dynamic programming can be very useful to evaluate random forests and to represent them 
in a different fashion, giving us a different view of these classifiers. It gives us the smallest possible born again tree that represents a random forest. This is extremely useful for interpretability. Um, the current limitation of our works is the scalability with regards to the number of features. This is due to the fact that we want both a faithful and optimal algorithm. We have already conducted work over the last two months, which consisted in relaxing the optimality assumption. That means looking for a faithful born again tree, which is not necessarily minimal in size. And the heuristic version of the born again tree that we designed is already able to deal with much larger data set with like, like Midiboon, which has 50 features or more and 100,000 features. And we're even improving further this heuristic version to deal with larger uh, data set. So we will keep you posted with the heuristic version of this, of this work and hope that you will be interested uh, by this classifier in your applications. And um, we remain available for any questions. Thank you for your attention.